Hi guys and welcome. I'm Enigmas and this is episode 10, The Builder's Guide to Feed the Beast. Today, we'll be spending most of our time looking at how to wire up an MFSU without destroying everything you own. If we have time, we'll take a look at upgrading some of our industrial craft machines to the tier 2 variety. But before we do that, we have to do a bit of an amendment to our episode 9 shenanigans with the logic gates being used as overflow protection and our sample automated crafting assembly station. Now, if you'll remember in that episode, the last episode, we had a wooden transport pipe in between our auto crafting table and our chests, same as over here, with one logic gate on it. And we were using that gate to check two things. One, is there a redstone signal so that we could use a lever to manually turn the system off and on? And the other thing that we were checking is whether or not there was space in the connected inventory. Now, unfortunately, what I failed to take into account is that it was actually connected to two inventories. And it doesn't care which one it's checking and which one is giving the results. The auto crafting table will never say that there is not room. So it will never turn off and stop pushing items before an overflow. So that doesn't work. What we need to do is isolate the gate checking the inventory so that it's only checking one as you can see here we've actually got two gates in service now it's checking this chest here and there are no other inventories directly adjacent to this pipe that has the gate on it and the other side here we've got it checking for the redstone signal but instead of checking for whether or not the inventory is full we're checking to see if there is a green pipe signal the green pipe signal is provided by this green pipe wire when this gate detects that there is space in the inventory. So you can see when there's space in the, oops, damn it, I didn't want to click on it. It said when there is space in the inventory, it's sending a green pipe signal. And then this guy is saying, okay, there's space in that other inventory and there's a redstone signal. So go ahead, start pulling items. And feed it through so i'm using this setup here is using diamond autarkic gates um because i didn't want to make up more gates just to redo the demonstration part of it you only need to use an autarkic gate on the side that you are pulling things out of and even then only if you don't want to use an engine so the autarkic gate is just a convenient way to bypass the need to put a redstone engine on it and you know have that extra block sitting around or whatever so it just has to be on the one side that's pulling items out it doesn't have to be on this side that's receiving it so you can use a normal gate there but also fortunately once again and i have to send a big thank you out to sand green one he's a regular contributor on reddit for first of all pointing out to me that this setup wouldn't work because this recognizes as a second inventory but also for pointing out how the pipe wire system works the pipe wire that a gate can send a signal on and receive a signal from is determined by what color pipe wires went into the recipe for that gate. So just to illustrate, if we look at the diamond and go to the recipe, it uses all four pipe wire colors. So it can send and receive a signal on any of these colors. And you can actually have four different colors of pipe wire on a gate as far as i know i'm not gonna go grab pipe wire and test um, but it basically allows you to set up complex shenanigans and decision making and signals and stuff like that but then if you look at the iron and gate or or gate oops just the regular see it only uses a red so that means it can only send and receive a signal on a red pipe wire that's important the gold uses red and blue so if you want if you need to send two different signals if you're using it to you know send two different decisions you can use a gold if you just need the one like we do for this you can use iron and if you need four you can use a diamond so it's easiest to just set it up on this one and show you exactly what we mean so again always a wooden transport pipe on the side that you're pulling items from now, I get this odd glitch from time to time where I'll put the pipe down and it won't actually show up until you do something else to interact with it, like that. And now this one's invisible until I go like that. And now that one's going to be invisible until I do something else. But anyways, 
wood, stone, stone. So we're connecting this auto crafting table to this gold chest. Then we can put our gates on. Now again, I'm using two iron Atarkic gates because that's what I have. You could use one Atarkic gate on this side to pull items out of the chest and just one regular iron and gate on this side. So we'll put one there. See now it appears and one there. And then the last thing we need to do is connect them with the red pipe wire. And you have to put one on the piece of pipe that has the gate on it. We'll put one there and then another one. So now they're connected. Now to set them up again, just a logic is we want to pull items out of this chest and put them in here as long as there is room in this chest to receive them. So on this side, we're going to say, do, 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 is there space in inventory? If yes, generate a red pipe signal. That's all we need on this side. And then over here we say, are you receiving a red pipe signal? If yes, start your engines. And then the other qualifying condition, are you receiving a redstone signal? If yes, start your engine. So if both of these conditions are true, it will start sending items. Now in this case, if we turn that guy off, It started up because I set the pipe wire condition first and then it only had that one condition even though this was off. So that's why it started, yeah. So now it's turned off and then if we turn it on, this guy lights up, says, hooray, I get to go pull things. There it goes. So that's the amendment. If you want overflow protection on an assembly system like this, you'll need to make sure that the gate checking for space and inventory is only directly adjacent to the inventory that you want to send items to and not any other stray inventory items that might be lying around. Turn that crap off. Let's go do something fun. I'm going to talk about the MFSU. Um, I have one currently in this facility. It holds 10 million EU. Um, I use it for charging, if necessary, for charging my quantum armor, my gravisuit chest, play, chest plate, mining laser, Vajra, whatever. Um, in my case, I also have the solar helmet, so it's not too often anymore that I need to use the MFSU to charge those things. But if you've got like a piece of armor that holds a million EU all by itself, it makes sense that you have the storage capacity to hold that energy so that you want to come and charge it. You don't have to wait for it to, to charge the box, to charge the armor. It just charges the armor and then you bugger off and go do something more interesting. So that's what we're looking at today. Now I've started the process of making the MFSU. If you'll recall when we made the MFE, the medium voltage storage, I, I mentioned that it's a component in the MFSU. Now you can see I've actually got materials here to start making several MFSUs. And I'm going to be doing an advanced um, industrial craft energy management video sometime in the not too distant future. Um, there's other things that we can do first that are a little bit lighter weight before we start pushing into the advanced stuff. So that's what I'm saving these for is probably I'll, when I set these up in my desired configuration, I'll do the video. But for now, we'll just make one to show you what's up. Um, so we need an advanced circuit. We've made these before. I, I don't remember exactly what we made them for, but we have made them. It's just your basic circuit with glowstone, two lapis, four redstone. We also have an advanced machine block which is your regular machine block. That's the eight refined iron bars around the outside of the crafting grid, two carbon plates and two advanced alloy. We've made these before as well. If not, remember any eye, just click on it, follow it through the, the line and you'll be able to figure out how to make it without any problems. And the MFE, obviously we've already made one of these. It's a machine block, the four energy crystals and the four double insulated gold cables. That's your MFE. Now, as far as this goes, if you've got your MFE in place and 600,000 EU tossed in the toilet doesn't bother you, you can always just pop it out, convert it into an MFSU, and then put it back into service with the extra additional transformer you need. Or if you don't want to dump the 600,000 EU, you can always just make another MFE, make your MFSU out of that, throw it into service, do what you want with whatever's in the MFE. Try and drain it into the MFSU. 
use it all up in your machines, whatever. So, I mean, the choice is yours, but just remember, even if you are putting an MFSU in line before an MFE, you still need to step down the MFSU voltage or you will blow up your MFE. Just putting that out there right now. So we've got three of the components. And now the last thing that we need to make are Lapatron crystals, which are upgraded energy crystals. For those, we need two circuits, one energy crystal, and six lapis lazuli. And we'll take this, because I think we'll need it. Yes, we will. We need that too. And that one. We will need copper. Do oh my goodness. There we go. Um we need refined iron. Everyone's favorite. Uh let's do it like this. So we need a total of a dozen regular circuits. So I'm just going to pull this guy apart. Actually, what am I doing this for? This is why we have our pocket crafting table. There we go. So we've got the 12 circuits. Now we need to make uh, six energy crystals. One, two, three, four, five, six. 8 times 6 32 something. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Now you'll notice these guys don't stack, and neither do the Lapatron crystals, so you'll want to make sure that you've got uh, inventory space to handle that. It's not particularly demanding, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and the lapis, I need 6 times 6 is 36. And we need those guys. We need more of these guys. There should be plenty. And that guy. So, balance it out. That'll do. So, one at a time. We do these guys. These can actually be used as um, mobile storage for EU. A Lapatron crystal holds a million EU. Um, I find them kind of clunky and not really all that, um, I don't know, I just, my motivation to use them as this remote storage sort of thing has never been all that great. I did use them when I did a frame vehicle in the Nether in my Tekkit series, and I would charge them in my nether facility and then send them via energy chest into the vehicle, which would then take them and feed them into an MFSU and drain them. Uh, I didn't really like it. It was uh, not my preferred way of doing things. But regardless, we've got the three bits and then the six bits make our MFSU. So now the other thing that we need to make, and this one is very, very, very important, is a medium voltage transformer. If you do not make this... I'm pretty sure you will regret it. And to do that, we need a machine block. And we might as well take this. And we basically, we need two double insulated um, gold cable. It's a really, really simple recipe for a medium voltage transformer. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about when we put the MFE, MFE into service is that... Um, Copper cables will not carry medium voltage. The way we set it up in the video is that the MFE was directly adjacent to the low voltage transformer. So you were never really having to carry medium voltage current across cables. If you do want to do that, you need to be using ideally the gold, the double insulated gold cables. They're basically like copper cables that can carry medium voltage energy. For the high voltage, it's generally accepted that the cable of choice should be glass fiber and i'm going to show you the recipe to use there are two basically there are two recipes um, one requires a diamond two redstone and six glass and the other requires a diamond two silver and six glass the difference between the two is that the recipe with the two redstone produces four glass fiber cables and the one with the silver produces six now, because there's a diamond involved, I'm more than happy to use silver and get an extra two cables. 
then think that I'm saving a couple of silver and end up having to use an extra diamond every two batches. So that's that, and that's what it ends up. Glass fiber cable. So it's expensive. Six cables for a diamond? Definitely not cheap. So you want to give some thought to how you're going to set things up so that you don't have to send it across glass fiber cable any farther than you need to, uh, unless you're comfortable with that. If you've got lots of diamonds and don't care, then uh, do your worst. So I'm actually not ready yet to start setting these MFSUs up in my facility, but I'll show you here. I'm actually getting ready to start sending the power from my solar panels down into the basement for I'm going to be moving my mass fabricator and everything down there. But when I set it up, it's going to be um, designed for really, really fast and efficient throughput of energy. And I'll be doing a advanced industrial craft energy management video in the not too distant future, but it's a little bit heavy for right now. So I'm just going to kind of use the floor upstairs to kind of illustrate um, what it is that we want to be doing. So let's pretend um, that you're putting your MFSU right near your machines. You don't need to worry too much about um, that. Let's do it this way. Let's pretend that this stupid white block here is my nuclear power plant. And it's going to send power to my MFSU. And then I want to send that power to, we'll pretend that these are my machines over here. Regular, you know, industrial craft machines that take low voltage. So one of the things that we need to do is we're going to run our cable from the uh, the nuclear power plant here. Like that. We'll pretend that that's where that is. And now I got a great tip, and I looked and looked and looked, and unfortunately I couldn't find the person's name because I couldn't even remember whether it was in my comment section or Reddit or something else. But if you've got something like an MFSU, you remember the last time I was kind of having a hard time just, you know, getting it to point the output face in the direction that I wanted it to because it was directly adjacent to transformers. Well, this clever fellow or lady, I don't even remember their name, sadly, um, pointed out that if you shift right click with your wrench, it will make it so that the, the output face faces the opposite direction of the face that you are pointing towards. So, for example, I think it should flip the other side when I go like that. Yeah. So it flips it to the other side. So just remember that if you're kind of in a tight quarters situation and you're wanting to flip a side, you can hold shift right click to make it, you know, jump to the other side from the face that you're pointing to. So that was a really, really great tip that would have saved me much time over the time that I've been playing modded Minecraft. So then we want a medium voltage transformer. And just like our low voltage transformer, it's got one input side and a number of output sides. So I just cheated there, just got in kind of an angle, but we'll pretend that I didn't. All right, let's say I put it in like that. That's my input side. We need our little handy trick, and now it's facing in towards the MFSU. So now this is outputting, it's taking the high voltage from the MFSU and outputting medium voltage, and that's not good for our machines. That'll still explode it just like medium voltage from an MF MFE directly to the machines. So we need to throw in an additional transformer, a low voltage, which you will already have from when you set up your MFE. And we'll do it wrong again just so that we can use that little trick. Right? Same thing. We want the input face to be connecting to one of the output faces there. We go like that. Now this here, anything that you pull out of this transformer will be low voltage suitable for any machine. But you have to remember, as you're running your cables, if you run it past this one here, it will suddenly become medium voltage. So it could either, if you're just using copper cables out here and you're trying to route it out that way, it'll melt your cables. If you connect it to a machine, the machine will explode. So the main point to take away from this is you need to step it down twice in order to feed machines that will only accept low voltage. There's some other considerations that we're going to get into in the advanced power management episode, which makes me think I need to do it sooner than I thought. Um, basically managing packets so that you're getting the maximum throughput of energy possible. If you set things up wrong, you'll notice that you're not really seeming to get as much energy as you might have expected. If you set things up right, quite often you end up seeming, it seems like you're getting way more 
than you bargain for, but in a good way, not in a way that's going to blow things up. So I'm going to put that sort of on the list of things to do as soon as it makes sense to do it. But for now, this is a safe way to set up your MFSU with your transformers so that you're not blowing things up. Now, the other thing that I wanted to cover very, very, very quickly is we need to make an electrolyzer. I mean, that's the bottom line. I can, I mean, I think we're to the point now where I've used NEI enough that I don't know, need to show you guys necessarily a ton of recipes, but the machine blocks that you're wanting to upgrade are the um, furnace, furnace. Um, if you're wanting to use the Industrial Craft 2 machines and you're not using Greg Tech, induction furnace is the one that you're upgrading to. And it's an advanced machine block, just like we used in the MFSU like five minutes ago, your old electric furnace and these copper bars. So induction furnace is the one that you want. If you want to upgrade your macerator, you want the rotary macerator, which again, advanced machine block, your old macerator and the refined iron. If in doubt, you're not sure if you're looking at the right one, the ones that you're upgrading to in the IC2 line will always use the old one that you've already got. So this one, you've already got the compressor. We'll look at that. I think this one's also pretty straightforward. You can see there's the one that we have. Singularity compressor is the upgrade, right? Uses the old one, advanced machine block. And the seven obsidian lastly is the extractor and this is the one that's uh kind of kind of fickle and silly really this is your old extractor this is your centrifuge extractor this is the one that we want it uses your old extractor advanced machine block and electrolyzed water cells this is where it's kind of silly what you need to make is called an electrolyzer uh, if you're playing with with greg tech he apparently changes that too because he's like awesome, everybody loves him. But if you're playing with Greg Tech disabled, this is an electrolyzer. It's a machine block, it's four copper cables, electronic circuit, two empty cells. Very, very simple machine to make. But the, tr the key with this thing is that you have to put it directly adjacent to a power storage device. Whether it's a bad box, an MFE, or an MFSU, it has to be directly adjacent to it. So in other words, do I have anything? No, wait, wrong, wrong bag. Yes, I do. Pretend this is my electrolyzer, just for example's sake, directly adjacent, right? It's gotta be contacting this unit and then you have to put some water cells in it, right? You take your empty cell, you, you'll, you're gonna have extra because you used it to make the electrolyzer anyways, you run to a pool of water with the cell in your hand, you right click it to make a water cell, and then you put it into the electrolyzer, and I've actually got one in the back here. I can't fly because I've got the wrong thing on. This is my electrolyzer back here, you can see it's tucked away. You put water cells in this side, and it will convert them to electrolyzed water cells when the storage device, your MFSU, your MFE, your bat box is over 70%. It will actually siphon off energy from your storage device, 10,000 EU for every electrolyzed water cell. And then if your storage device drops below a certain level, it'll actually feed that energy back to your storage device and convert these back to water cells. I don't use it for a reserve that way, but we need the electrolyzed water cells to make the upgraded extractor so you make your electrolyzer you put it directly next to your storage device with water cells in the inventory just let it do its thing for a while and then you come back a little while later and as long as you're charging up your your storage device to the point where it's full or mostly full you'll have some electrolyzed water cells you use that to upgrade your extractor now the only other thing to say about these tier two machines is that they have sort of the easiest way to look at it is with the the macerator it's got a speed and if you just basically plug it into a power source and leave it the speed will be set at zero and if you put things into macerate as long as it keeps macerating the speed will keep going up and the higher this rpm goes the faster it macerates now obviously the goal is to have this as high as possible all the time so that it macerates quickly all the time and the way you do that is you put a redstone signal you can use a, a switch you can use a torch uh, when red power comes out, you'll see me do it with a jacketed cable. Um, you need a red, 
a redstone signal going to the machines. Now the consequence to having them revved up and ready to go whenever you want to use them is that we're in this when they're in this state, they have a constant power draw. It's not huge, but it's constant. So if you're just barely getting by with your energy production as it is, you're probably going to need to add to it if you want to keep all of your tier two machines revved up all the time. So get the redstone signal on. They all look a little bit different. Like for this one, speed is 7,500 meters per second. Um, this one is 100% heat. And the centrifuge, or sorry, the singularity compressor is 75,000 PSI. But it's all the same concept. At zero, it's basically really, really slow. At maximum, it's really, really fast. So there's your MFSU, your tier two devices, and a correction to the build craft automatic assembly system next episode i have no idea what we're doing but it'll probably be something uh hopefully interesting so if you're enjoying the series if it's helpful to you and you're not yet subscribed subscribing to my channel means you get a notification whenever i add a new video so that's something you might want to consider thanks for watching guys take care and we'll talk to you next time